sick and tired of bread in my pocket preachers. I'm telling you, I get results. I don't believe in giving and don't let them come back to me. You can't get me to give no more if I see you bad ground. Say amen. Tell somebody that you will receive a harvest. But let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Hear my theme music. All Things Theology, All Things Theology. We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace, and welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K-Dub. Today, we're going to be looking at Brian Karn. Uh, I have heard of Brian Karn for a few years, a number of years, and hey, I wanted to finally get to him. I had the opportunity to listen to a sermon he preached at a conference at... When I say this guy's name, you're going to be like, oh, that says me. That says everything about him as well, but at Jamal Bryant's church, right? No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way. I'm tired of your church. You know, if Jamal Bryan invites you to preach at your church, it's almost as a rite of passage that you are a false teacher, right? <laughs> so it is not a good thing to be invited to Bryan, uh, Jamal Bryant's church. Well, we're going to get right into it because this is a, it is it was a mess of a sermon. Uh, let's start off with the intro, you know, because a lot of pastors think they be deep. But watch this mess. Watch this. I don't think it's by accident. I don't think it's by accident that a prophet is in town during the presidential debate. Now he's talking about himself. He thinks he's a actual prophet, but w watch the <laughs> watch the gift of the prophetic. How deep it goes. Um. Of course, President Trump was our former president. President uh, Biden is our president now, but a prophet stands in between your past and your future you didn't hear what i just said so one of them is symbolic of the past and the other is symbolic of the future but no, 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 no. so now president trump is symbolic of the past i mean i guess because he's the past president and biden is symbolic of the future um <laughs> this is the level of ridiculousness that even the office of president now becomes some kind of prophetic thing to be interpreted. Don't worry, it's going to get worse and more sillier. God sent me here to declare that wherever you are, it's about to be a shift. Yep. 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 And I want you to repeat after me and say this loud because I just feel this because we're in a season of change. Somebody shout 24 hours. 24 minutes, 24 months, 24 days, prophesy and say something about to break. Now, I don't know where that is for you. Uh, be careful because it might be your tailbone. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. No, 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 no. You need to be more specific with your prophecies, right? But uh, look, notice the ridiculousness. God sent me, hear me to tell you this about something about the president being your past and the future. Uh, this isn't making no sense. Now, he's talking about this season of shift, and technically he's not wrong, but let me allow him to more elaborate more on this. I don't know if it's going to be 24 days, 24, oh, by Shonda. I don't know if it's going to be 24 hours. Oh, I want to respond to that, right? Something's going to break. Notice how vague this is. Something's going to break, but, but notice how vague it is. It allows you to interpret. So, so you come home <laughs> to, after this conference, knock over the vase, and the, the vase breaks. Then it's talking about that, right? But if you go home and your job, your boss calls you and tell you got a raise, then that's what it means when it's something's going to break. See, it allows you to interpret. You're driving on the road and in three weeks, see a, a flat tire. See, something broke. See, it is so vague that literally anything can, you know, fit it. See, so this is his escape route of, well, I, I can't be a false prophet because, right? I technically wasn't wrong. Well, technically, you didn't prophesy anything. This is just so vague nonsense. It's word salad. 24 months, 20. But I do know this, that sooner or later, something is about to break on your behalf. And if you believe that, tell somebody, you need to get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Your praise is a little low. I need your praise to match your level of expectation. I need your praise to match your level 
of it I need your praise to match your level of expectation hey let's say it again say 24 days 24 months 24 minutes 24 weeks scream at somebody and say something about to break y'all act like y'all don't know what to do but somebody's giving because they done tapped into the overflow I say people are giving because they done tapped into the overflow don't shout on it put a seed on it don't shout on it put a seed on it slap three people and say get ready get ready get your hands off me so there there are people uh giving this is the beginning of the service of his preaching now you already know what's coming at the end so you can save save those breads till the end but people are going out there putting money on the altar so the stage and you know you got to tap into the overflow right the the level of praise gotta match your expectation you see these are these are buzzwords in a lot of charismatic circles that actually don't mean anything you know something's about the shift in your life well i mean we are about to get a new president here in a couple months so technically you're not wrong right so again it's so vague that literally anything in your life could fit this vague this vague prophecy you go outside and fall on the ground something shifted in your life yes you turn the lights off something shifted in your life you know so it's so vague that anything can fit it i mean <laughs> you know be recording this podcast right video something shifted <laughs> so it's like literally filling it in for you in your life yeah because exactly right you ain't got to tap into that seed right that seed and that overflow i don't know is these all the heretics getting together and they want to use the word overflow or is it just me or y'all hearing that word a lot well don't worry we got some more false doctrine this time he's going to get us with a little 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 god's doctrine right let's hear I, it i i i know he's in love with me i i'm absolutely convinced that he's in love with me from the beginning of time from adam all the way to now god has been attempting to communicate and show a people that he's absolutely in love with them he started with a man by the name of adam created him made him in his image and in his likeness that's one thing to let you know that he was God's prize or God had a lot of value on him because man is the only creation that looks just like God. That's what he thinks of you. He didn't make you a duplicate, but he made you a master copy. When God so this is actually the problem with this, and he's about to go on to it reiterate this. And this is not what the image of God is. God didn't make a master copy. You know, you're exactly the same as God. So you literally have... This isn't even little God doctrine. This is big God doctrine, right? God is creating things that are exactly like him, like the master key. No, this theology does not have any distinction between the creator and that which is created, right? The creature creator distinction is something that we need to get in our vocabulary, because if you don't, you blur the lines on who God is and who man is. So now God is we're, we're just the exactly exact duplicate just like a master key. Sure, he came before us, but we're, we can do exactly what he can do, just like the master key. See, this is bad doctrine. This is what, not what the image of God te is, is uh, about. We reflect some of God's characteristics, you know, but not all of them. There are some things we do not share in. Om omniscience, omnipresence, right? Clearly, uh, eternality. There are numerous characteristics of God that we, we don't duplicate God. We, we're not the master key of. So this it's it's quite a confusion. Many people don't understand the image of God. It's it's not God kind of you look in a mirror and you're looking at God. That's kind of how many people think of the image of God. That's not what it's about. God created man. He made man in his own image and in his likeness. I always say it like this, uh, just to give you a little quick uh, a little quick something. When God made man, he made man a reflection of perfection. Somebody say I am god's reflection and this this view what he's talking about also doesn't take into consideration the fall that though we were created in the image of god we are marred it it has been distorted and now christians and christians only are being renewed recreated into that image of christ so he he, he doesn't even seem to have a view of of the fall in light of what he's talking about he seems to still think we are exactly in um that same state as Adam, right? Innocence and all that kind of, I mean, interesting perspective here. 
So that's what he did when, he got, when God made man. Everything that God does, he always does a reflection of himself. In Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Earth was with our foreign darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved over the face of the waters. That's very important. Because before God said anything, he moved over the face of the waters. Why did God move over water? Because if you move over sand, you can't see yourself. But if you move over water, you can see yourself. In everything that God does, he always... So, <laughs> he's saying the reason why God, uh, you know, hovered over the face of the water is because he wanted to see himself in the reflection of the water. I mean, this isn't even taken to the consideration God is invisible. I mean, so, there's so much bad doctrine here. It's, 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 uh, it's asinine. I mean, you know, some people have God as kind of this big big glorified man in the sky that's kind of what it sounds like kind of like mormonism here he wants to see his reflection after he saw himself he then said let there be light which means you communicate based on how you see yourself that went right over your head if you see yourself sick you talk sick but if you see yourself healed you talk healed if you see yourself blessed, you talk blessed. Tell somebody, I am blessed. You said that like you're Presbyterian. Put a little power in your voice and tell somebody, I am blessed. Now, shout out to my Presbyterians. You know, I love some good Presbyterians, though I'm a card-carrying Baptist myself, right? Uh, so he's like, hey, God said, let there be light. He said, because that's how you say when you, when you want to see yourself like that. So it, I'm kind of confused. It Was God not light? But that's how he wanted to see himself or he just kind of repeating something that's true. I don't know, because he's saying because you know, the parallel is, hey, if you don't want to be sick, you say, hey, I'm not sick. You need to shout over yourself. You're blessed, even though that might not be a true reality to yourself. So, I mean, I'm trying to be careful and, and, and fair to, to him, but that's the only way I can see that parallel. You know, but again, this is this the, the positive speech. If you want to see something in your life, see, you can create ex nihilo like God as well. See, in this theology, you can do everything God can do, right? But we got some more little God's doctrine. Uh, don't worry. Now, man, again, is a reflection of perfection, which means if I never see God, if I see man, I know there's a God somewhere. Y'all not talking to me. Look at your neighbor and say, I know who I am. You so, got that part? Yeah. So, yeah, I got you. But it sounds like what he's saying, if you look at man, because man is, remember, the master key copy. So man, if you see man, you, you actually are seeing God. No, 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 no. When you see man, you're seeing man. You're seeing a created, uh, you know, cr a creature of God. Sure. Uh, which should be reflecting uh, God, but not God. Right. So, again, this is like polytheism on steroids right here, you know, um, kind of some he henotheistic view as well. So, but again, he, he, this, I mean, this is literally in the first 10, 15 minutes of the sermon. And he got into some other mess as well. He's placed in a finished work. All he has to do is pick what's already his. Listen to this. Adam, of course. God loves him so much because all of our life we've been kind of taught that we were made to worship him. I would like to challenge that and say we were made to be loved by him. So he's actually denying right here that we were created to worship God, um, <laughs> which is asinine. Uh, Yes, you were created to worship. So he's like, I'm going to challenge the idea we were created to worship. We were created to be loved by him. Well, two things can be true at the same time. I'm thinking of Colossians, the Colossians 116, where it says at the end of it, all things were created through him and for him. And this idea is for him is for his glory, for his to be worshiped by him. I mean, you can go through all throughout scripture uh, with Revelation 411, which speaks as worthy are you, O Lord. God to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things 
And by your will, they existed and were created. See, this is worship going on actually in the heavens. The reason why we should worship God is because he created us. He is due worship. So I, I, this seems like a silly point for him to, to actually be contending. But false teachers will contend with the most biblical, plain biblical issues in the Bible, right? But don't worry now. He, I mean, his sermon was everywhere. There was actually no real point in the sermon. He was just so everywhere in the sermon. Um, but you know what? I will give him credit because he actually did preach the gospel. The problem is he's going to go on later to deny everything what he said. But before that, he's looking for some some proponents to slay in the spirit. Right. And so, you know, you got to get some good slaying in the spirit and get some emotional conjoling while you at Jamal Bryant's church. Right. Lift your hands. This is the beginning of a new day for you. Your life shifts today. The enemy is doing everything in his power to take you out of here and even attack your body. But because he loves you, the yoke, y'all better scream because I feel it turning. Let's go to church. It's a hoe. Somebody scream. Hey, come on. Come on. Y'all better scream. Get your hands off me. So did he say Satan is attacking your body? But who did I see attack her body? I mean, look, look how hard this slap was. My goodness. Watch this. Watch this, guys. It's a hoe. Somebody. <laughs> Put... He put that hand on class A misdemeanor, full effect. Don't worry, he's got another assault. And and look, he was he was doing this to multiple women. He only did this to one guy. It was like six or seven women. He came around and was just doing this slap to. Somebody was just standing here where they went. Somebody, you where you went? Why you left? Come here, bring your hips back here. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? Bring those hips here? Things you should not say in church. Bro. How dare you? Lift your hands. Come here. Yeah, she's trying to get hands. away. Be good. God got a great plan for you. I want you to pray against two things. There's a demon of anger. That's a sign of your life. That wants you to just snap at people. You got a good heart. But my God, you'll put a cussing on somebody when they make you mad. When I pray for you today, the Spirit of God says I'm going to heal some things between you and your mama. And you're going to begin to see God cause what the enemy meant for bad to turn for your good y'all stretch your hands to water i'm going to god's going to give you a miracle in your digestive system you've had a condition in your stomach the lord's going to heal that and he told me to tell you pack your bags because the house is yours hey somebody praise him y'all ain't praising Yo. hey 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 Yo, okay she got the stomach pain stomach stuff healed now she got chest pains you know, let me be just to be real. Look, this is good practical advice. A lot of stomach issues, bodily issues are because of eating improperly. Look, I'm not trying to make fun of her. This is being, being serious. Look, eat healthier. A lot of those times, those problems will go away. I mean, God just created that, created it to be like that, right? Um, but but again, he's, he's just promising her all these things. I mean, none of that actually helped her. None of that did, right? Um, but I have this one titled Deep Revelation. See, that, see, some of these false teachers should be saying something real simple. And, you know, they put God name on it. Now it's supposed to be deep, be deep revelation. You know, imagine me coming in to your house. It's dark. And I say, God told me to tell you, if you turn the light on, the light bulb will come on. Hey, glory, glory. Turn off the light. <laughs> That's how this sounds to me. Right. W watch this. Watch this. Listen to me. If I tell you a TV is in your backyard and you go home and the TV ain't there, call the police. <laughs> Somebody stole your TV. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Duh. No, 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 no. Again, this would be the simplest points and they be trying to trying to be all deep with this. And it's like. Bro, you ain't saying nothing. Every every everybody knows that. Yeah, obviously if I have a TV and it's gone, yeah, I should probably just call the police, right? I mean, my goodness. Oh, well don't worry, he's gonna give you some more mess here. So some of us try to manipulate God with money. How you gonna manipulate God with money? 
Now, I want you to keep this in mind, considering what I know is going to come later, right? But you don't know because you, you haven't seen the full video, right? I have. But he's actually making a good point right here. Some people try to manipulate God with money. That's right. Now, is he going to be consistent with this? <laughs> is this going to get funky in here? Because I'm going to use a bunch of... We already know what tithing time brings. Gas light. I'm thinking that's some type of arson. Yeah, you get a lot of, lot of gas lighting, right? And a lot of contradiction, right? Because this is a good point. Yes. God don't need your money, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So watch this because this is a good point. Again, he's going to contradict himself. But I'll acknowledge a good point. The earth is the Lord's. I don't give to be blessed. I give because I am blessed. I am loved by God. I believe the Spirit of God challenged me today to challenge 12 people to do this. We're going to do it. You don't want to do it? Don't do it! No pressure. God don't want no mad money. What Gas kind of giver like he loves? Don't, don't, don't give by compulsion, freely, is the way God wants you to give. But I believe the Spirit of God challenged me today. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But I, I believe I heard him say this, and I, I believe I hear him pretty well. I, I prophesied here recently a lot of things that are happening. I told my church last year that God said this summer was going to be the hottest summer we ever had. Now, <laughs> so far that hasn't come true. Um, I, I had looked this up because he lives in uh, North Carolina. And 2012 was the hottest summer in North Carolina from what from the quick research I did. So far it hasn't come to pass. So, But he thinks, look, it, it, no, don't get me wrong, it's hot. <laughs> he got nothing on that Texas heat either, man. I'll tell you. No, no. But just because you prophesied, you know, you prophesied it's going to be the hottest summer. And then just because it's hot doesn't mean you get proximity, prophecy by proximity. Well, it was close enough. <laughs> That's not how prophecy works. It is hot out there. <laughs> Tell somebody I am not going to hell. Everybody didn't say that. Okay, I'm serious. I, 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 we've seen the word of the Lord come true our government I, i'll just say it like this our government is about to change hear me hear me prophetically by the spirit our government is about to change he says hear me prophetically by the spirit <laughs> that ain't no prophecy everybody knows that bro in october november we're gonna have a new president bro you ain't saying nothing prophetically that's actually what's going to happen <laughs> that's like saying in january it's gonna be a new year well, duh. Yes, sir. That's no prophecy, bro. What the heck? Prophesy. Prophesy. Oh, my goodness. Those who are in power will no longer be in power. I'm telling you that by yes. the spirit. It's a new Everything election cycle. Everything is about to shift. But the people who know their God will be strong and are going to exploits. Every eye closed. Every hand uplifted. Watch this. If I see eyeballs, I'm coming at it with a fork. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Close those eyes. Lift those hands. Ha, ha. There are 12 people in this room that's going to give a seed tonight of $1,000. I don't thank you. I know you're here. Remember, not under expulsion, free giving. But you give a thousand, 12 people are going to give a thousand freely. <laughs> My goodness, Sarah, what a contradiction. But he's going to contradict himself further. I'm going to pronounce over your life that starting today, your life would be so consumed by his love that you will begin to see miracles daily. 
that this seed is about to open something up for you that's going to cause you to go into a stream of increase. Remember he said we don't give to get. And this is literally what he's actually teaching. I mean, this is this. Is, and he's contradicting his own self, right? I don't I don't give to get blessed. Well, that's the, literally the reason why you're telling them to give to get this stream of income. So he, this is the dangling the carrot over your your face. Right. I'm not. Hey, give freely. Not under compulsion. God don't want you to get mad, right? He don't want no mad money, right? All this nonsense he's saying, man. This is. I'm tired of the church. We don't want that. This is gaslight tithing. This is gaslight giving. How about that? Um, but don't worry. So yeah, he has these thousand people come up, right? Who's going to give? Um, what? What? How much did he say? <laughs> I already forgot. Who <laughs> know their God? Every hand uplifted. If I see eyeballs, I'm coming at it with a fork. <laughs> Sorry, I got to listen to how see how much he said. Close those eyes. Lift those hands. Ha, ha. There are 12 people in this room that's going to give a seed tonight. Oh, yeah. So 12 people. Let me write that down. So $12,000. Sorry, some of y'all been listening better than I have. That's $12,000, right? Quick maths. Right. I was, I was a student in math. <laughs> but don't worry. You think that's all he's going to tell people to give? Don't worry. Watch this. And the Lord said to me, God told him that there will be 30 people. How many? Come on. You sound like uh, Latter day Saints. Try it again. How many? All right. He said there will be 30 people in this room tonight that will sow a seed of 300 dollars some of you are watching online some of you are in this room but i want to lay my hands on every person who gives that thousand i bet you do and i want to declare over your life that every time i get blessed you get blessed so you get blessed by proxy because you sow the seed to him. And one thing I've noticed at Jamal Bryant's church, because this ain't even a Sunday service. Every time they meet, they can meet for a prayer meeting and they busting out offering. Small group meeting, busting out offering. I mean, my goodness, every time they meet, they getting, uh, they asking and demanding money. But if you add up that total right there, that's a solid 21,000. And that's just from those uh, 42 people. There's, there's hundreds of people in that room, if not. Uh, cl close to a thousand D definitely a hundred a couple hundred people at that church service this because this is a conference you know you know they doing every offer never after every session here um so twenty one twenty one thousand dollars and he got all those people he wanted and that again they probably made close to thirty thousand on just this little session alone and that ain't counting the money that they was tossing on the stage before he before he uh went up there to preach if i can call it that Again, this is a bread in my pocket preacher. This is a J.G. Wentworth preacher. I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth. 877 cash now. But yeah, uh, I, I found this part sad as well. I want to challenge those 12 people, whoever those 12 individuals are, with your permission, Pastor. Whoever those 12 of course. To the altar if you can. Whoever Get those out of the way. Get out of the way. Individuals are. Who's going to sow that seed? Whoever those 12 individuals are. You got three minutes to get that seed and meet me up here to the front quickly. quickly. Three minutes. Come. Come with your seed. Don't Come forget that money. Do not forget your money. Yes. Come with that seed. Yes, yes. Come. Come with that seed. Come with that seed. Don't don't forget the move out of the way. Don't forget your seed. Right? Jingle bells, jingle bells. I'm not going to hell. Terrible. You know Terrible. One more clip, one more clip, and we'll stop the foolishness. I mean, this whole sermon was foolish, but uh, again, remember he said you don't give to get? I'm telling you, I get results. I don't believe in giving and don't nothing come back to me. <laughs> you can't get me to give no more if I see you bad ground. Say amen. So notice, I, I don't. Somebody, you will receive a harvest. Notice the reason for his giving. He doesn't he gives because he 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 believes he's going to get something in return. I'm going to get something in return. I don't give if I don't get nothing in return. Again, these guys are not consistent. They'll tell you one thing. Oh, no, 
free giving, I'm not under compulsion. And then under the next minute, under the next breath, they're gaslighting you and telling you the opposite. But you got to follow them because they, they uh, pay attention when you listen to a sermon. Notice for it being consistent because out of all this, you, you'll get that bread in my pocket preacher. Now, now you can go in and drop the bread, guys. Yeah, he about that bread in my pocket. The Bible warns of preachers like this who have who their belly is their appetite, who they desire to sneak into old ladies' houses and to take advantage of them. Peter talks about that. This man is a Brian Carn is a false teacher. He makes it clear what his motivation. Every message is about money. You ever notice that? Because the, look, the Bible talks about money, so we have to talk about it. Absolutely. But not every text is about money. These guys, even when they preach the gospel, even when they get the gospel right, they jump over that real quick. And it's about sowing a seed for all this to happen. It's terrible. Again, like I said, he did preach a good, actually a decent uh, gospel message. It was about the atonement of Christ. Well, there was a little section about that. Uh, to be fair to him, it was about a five, six minute. There was a gospel presentation. I'll say that. But he, quick, he quickly jumped over that to get to the tithing. Right. So you can actually see what's actually more important. Avoid Bishop Prophet Brian Karn. Till the next time, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below. Hey,